I mean, Tina mentioned this in the introduction, but in, so I started making fanzines when I was in high school. And you know, you guys know what fanzines are, right? <laughs> Serious, maybe not. I mean, you know, people would make these things and go to a place called Kinko's, and then a place called the post office. Um, but I started making them in high school, and then I actually started making this one in, when I was in graduate school at UC Irvine in the early 90s. And um, the, Fales, the Fales Library is the um, special collections library at NYU. And this woman there, by the name of Lisa Darms, who went to Evergreen, where I went to undergrad school, but she was there after me. She is a librarian there, and she started this thing called the Riot Girl Archive, which is pretty radical. I think you actually haven't even visited it, um, so you should speak to that. But I donated my fanzine, so I did this fanzine for three or four years, and I made seven of them, I think, I don't even remember anymore. But I donated the flats, so the original, which is all super glue, Zacto knife flats, um, and original copies, like original edition copies of this and a few other fanzines that I had made during that time period, as well as my own personal fanzine collection, which was almost 400 um, Riot Girl feminist, queer core fanzines. It was, it's a really amazing collection. You guys should go visit it in New York. I'm serious. It was in my attic for many years. Um, and I donated it to Fails along with, um, well, here's a, so I guess I should just say, like, this, you know, I think this is interesting to our conversation. It's like, I started making this in graduate school, um, and it, well, I guess I would say, um, mm -hmm, there's so much, I could just talk about that for a long time, but um, it, it was a way of sort of communicating with other people. Again, it's pre-internet, Facebook, email, Twitter, before all that. Um, so it was a culture, it was part of the culture that I came out of in terms of the music scene that I was involved in. It was a way of sort of disseminating information and making networks and friendships. And and, um, and it actually has a lot to do with trauma. It has a lot to do with sort of looking at childhood. It has a lot to do with uh, lesbian visibility. Um, and so here's just a spread of one of the pages. Um, and what I was doing was appropriating from so many different resources, like weird pop psychology books I would find in thrift stores. And the National Enquirer was a big part of this, because in the late 80s and the early 90s, that's where you saw lesbians. Christy McNichol, um, Jodie Foster, Madonna, when she kissed a woman once. And, um, um, <laughs> And that's and then the other thing with the Fails Library is that, as Tina mentioned, I ran this record label, which um, um, is that I'm donating my that archive of all of that material um, to them as well. So this is just a little slide of some of the records that we put out, and here's a box of material that um, I've been taking up a lot of space in my studio for a few years that has now been sorted and is on its way there. So, um, and then Anne has had the opportunity to visit the Fails Library and um, look at this stuff. So, I guess I've, I'm, I'm, I guess I would also say that I'm the kind of person that saved everything, believing that it was important, you know? Um, like, I saved every fanzine that anybody ever gave me, which is why I almost had 400 of them. Um, with the Mr. Lady stuff, like, I saved all the masters, I saved posters of everything. I, we saved every single letter that we ever got from anybody. Um, there's just a really strong, I mean, I think it's a generational thing, like, coming from, part of that archive of feelings work for me was, like, the love letters and the tapes was the sort of disappearance of analog culture that, you know, I will never have a box of love letters again. I mean, I'll have a digital, like an inbox. I can have a folder, but I'll, I'll never have that. I will never have, you know, you get like a playlist from somebody, it's the, not the same thing as the beautiful cassette with all the, like, you know, the details of the cover. And, you know, someone can make a bad cover and you'd be like, uh, -uh it's not gonna work out. <laughs> Ter seriously, right? Like the aesthetics of it were so important. Like, wow, that's just so terrible. Like, you didn't put any thought into that. Um, so 
so and it's not like I pine for that. It's not like I'm a Luddite or something, and I'm like, oh, analog. I'm just saying, like, there's this material witness to our personal lives that is disappeared in my generation, like totally disappeared. Um, and something else has taken its place, which that's cool. But I have a, you know, I do have a sense of loss about that. You know, it's, it's interesting to me. But so with that in mind, I am somebody who, in doing the fanzines and doing Mr. Lady, it's not like I had a sense of like, this is really important work. But I knew there's, you know, I, there's a fiber in me that knows that, like, I would be a librarian if I wasn't who I am. I really think that. Um, that, that knows this material stuff that culture creates is really important and that there's all this exciting scholarship and whatnot can, that can happen around it. So, do so can I add to that a little oh, bit? Oh, please do. Um, there's so much going on here already. So one thing I want to say is um, the nice thing about following the Archive of Feelings images with the I Heart Amy Carter images is that uh, for me they suggest the way in which zines are also visual archives of a kind, um, and it's all the more evident if you go to Fails and get to see the master versions of these Xeroxed um, uh, zines, because you see the cut and paste where, where Tammy Ray or a zine maker collects all of these images from other places or text. Maybe we should flip back to yeah. that, um, that second image. Yeah. Uh, and, and collages them together in order to make something else happen. And things like collecting the National Enquirer pieces, which a lot of us did at mm -hmm. that time, because they were evidence of this thing, like, did you see that? Okay, well, let's, you know, let's distribute mm -hmm. it. Uh, it's, it, is, it is a visual archive of that moment and also of, of uh, collecting one's own feelings and putting them out there in the world, recombining them, combining the text and the visual, and so on. I also find it fascinating that zines have made it into archives so quickly. And I yeah. think it is testimony to some of the work of 70s feminisms and institutions like Lesbian History Archives, that grassroots archives in turn made it possible for certain kinds of work to go on in feminist classrooms, for example, um, and that a bunch of um, well-trained, young, uh, feminist and queer librarians started making zine collections at Duke University, at Barnard, at a bunch of places. In fact, by the time Lisa Darms set out to put the Riot Girl collection together at NYU, one of the things she did was to try to think about what else one might need um, besides the zine archives, and so she set out to mm -hmm. look to producers, to send masters, to send other kinds of materials surrounding their zine production in order to continue to consolidate the holdings of um, zine archives in a range of academic universities. It's remarkable uh, that, that 20 years later, riot girl feminism is being archived. And I'm fascinated by that mm -hmm. and, and found myself wanting to go see what that was about because I, even though you're talking about it as a moment that is in danger of being lost, it's, it's analogness or it's printness, mm -hmm. I'm also mm -hmm. Intrigued by the degree to which it does exist in an archive already to be studied, whereas I think there are aspects of 70s feminisms that um, are much more vulnerable to mm -hmm. a kind of loss mm -hmm. or to never having been collected in uh, mainstream kinds of institutions. So we're at a really interesting crossroads moment as we find ourselves moving from analog to digital, as we find different kinds of visibility and archiving happen um, alongside of that. I think we'll say more about this, of sort of queer representation as opposed to different kinds of lesbian visibility that may not exactly feel like they are representations of us, uh, what's going on with the ongoing evolution of um, image culture. But